for U of L and a CG honoring Clinton Glasscock. Classmate of mine at St. X, who died earlier this year, that a, former, a Bellarmine booster. As we're ready to go here, as JJ Trainer wins the tip, and here is Sky Clark. Yeah, Trainer gets a start. Dennis Evans uh, only played three minutes against the Aggies, as Louisville gets a corner three from Mike James to start him off. Trey White, little ball movement early on. It's a Bellarmine team that's going to be very patient. They're going to make the extra pass a lot of times, work the shot clock down as we see it there. And a bucket. Into the lane for Garrett Tipton. Tipton you got to be disciplined on defense against this team. Again, every time Bellerman has the ball, you're going to see extra pass, a lot of backdoor, a lot of to the basket like that, just right there. Cut right after with the recovery. Though. And Tipton showed us last year, he's able to drive to the basket and score in the paint. And he can also hit for three. There you go. They really go through the gauntlet early in the season. A suitor gets all the way to the basket. It's easy, too, and it is 7-3 nights. As I said, that four-point loss on Sunday. Frame baseline to Hack. Gets it inside. Has his shot blocked by Trainer. Suddenly Hatfield there for the rebound. White makes a little move. Shot up. Here we go for Trey White. Watch Tipton away from the ball. Tipton is number 10. He moves as well as anybody away from the ball. It lights a little... Turnaround jumper there from Whelan, the hook shot. Ten on the shot clock for Louisville. Just the two field goals in the early one. James to the basket, the left-handed shot goes in. McKinney is the quickest, coming back from a knee injury last year at North Dakota State. Clark will try a three and got it. And the cards are back in front, 10 now. He playing if Scotty didn't shoot. The former Iroquois star that he was. Curtis Williams on the court. We see Tyler Johnson who came in for that last segment. Was that a pass or an it air was, ball? It, it ends up being a good pass. <laughs> Thought there might have been a charge there. Tipped in another triple. Got it. Two for three for from three in the early going. Williams is a guy who, yeah, if he gets some looks, he's gonna be able to shoot it. He's, he's got, does a little bit of everything. Suter again with Yovanovich on him. Whelan drives on Glenn, turns in the lane and hits. If they're gonna win any games at all, he's got to be a factor. Greer had 14 rebounds in the Chattanooga game. Oh. Scott Clark gets to the basket and scores it. Smith on the cut in the lane. Back out to Whelan. Six on the shot clock for Bellerman. Back kicks it out to Smith for the three, and he got it. Whelan didn't panic with the shot clock running down when he got in the paint. He kicked it out to Smith for that triple as he's the first night to hit a three other than Tipton. The third lead change of the half, and Bash beats everybody down court and scores. Rand now has a baby brother. Williams to White. White will try the three, and he got it. And cards are back within one. It doesn't appear the NCAA is going to grant them that waiver, so their fourth and final year of transitioning from NCAA Division II to one. And Pete Suter just absolutely makes a man move on the baseline. The pedigree of these Bellman players, winners in high school. Suter has started on two state championship teams at Carmel. As Des McKinney to Garrett Tipton for the slam. Knights on an 11-3 run. Smith in the paint, back to Whelan. 10 on the shot clock. Here's Tipton, he has in double figures already. Gets to the paint, and Trainer with the block, his second of the game. Trailing by five in the scoring drought in just over two minutes, Williams Forcing, that was a little force. He can't see. He yeah. was pretty adamant about it. Yeah, the it officials looked, didn't see it. They it looked like he. It looked like he was on the underneath there. As, and like there's the first bucket. back cut of the evening. Three on point shooter. shooter or trainer. Oh, trainer could have just turned and shot it. White all the way to the basket, up and in, and that'll be big to give the cards a little bit of momentum heading into the locker room. Tipped in the drive, and Huntley Hatfield got just enough of that. Man, like when he was driving, he had trainer wide open. James going to get a look at three, and he got it. He started the game that way, and he hits his second triple of the night. Suter focused on driving on James, and then it's Alec Cream going back door. Suter finds him, and the Knights are back up by four.
kicks it over to Clark for three, and Sky able to hit the triple, his second three of the night. Nothing special there. Tyler just getting the ball to him, and he's in the corner open for the three. Well, McKinney just takes Johnson right to the basket and gets the easy two. But here's the, the, here's the play. Frame. We see Sky Clark with a triple from the corner. Tyler drawing the defense and, and kicking it over to Sky for the open three. Ten on the shot clock for the cards. Clark gets to the basket and an easy two for him. Tipped him back in for Bellerman. As the cards on this possession with a chance to take the lead. Tyler all the way to the basket. Huntley Hatfield with a nice catch and he scores. That and that's was something we haven't seen in a while. And I would think you'd go right back to Huntley Hatfield. Johnson, Clark, White, Huntley, Hatfield, and Caleb Glenn, former male high star, and off the cut, Sky Clark. Simpson with the runner, and boy, what a difference he makes. Bellowman back within nine. Tyler Johnson gets it to Trainer in the paint. Boy, did he elevate to get that in. I was going to say the Cards have taken this lead by not settling for bad threes. That's the third bad three we've seen uh, Tyler Johnson shoot tonight. Free with a baseline jumper got it, and Bellerman is back within seven. So the Knights showing a little bit of life here with 8.50 to play. And they'll get a three in the corner from Scott Clark. Can't get it to go, but Trainer with the offensive rebound, and he's got He gets it to go. He also had Huntley Hatfield under the basket. Yeah, His he... mom loves it. It's the time in the game when... Bellerman would have maybe gone to Ben Johnson for a three. And he's White. not available tonight. How about Huntley Hatfield inside the offensive rebound of the putback? We'll see what they do coming out of that timeout. Louisville's already hit seven three-pointers in this game, and that ties their season high as they go right into Huntley Hatfield. And how about Alan Frame with the defensive stop? And it was that dunk on the break, right? Yes, that it was. was his last basket. That was his last basket. Shooter to Whelan, and he gets a clean lane right to the basket. This feels like a key possession in a seven-point game with five and a half minutes to play. And Garrett Tipton hits the triple. He has 13 points, and Bellerman is back within four. Yeah, now they look they to get Huntley Hatfield posting up. He's going to come set a screen for Johnson, and then if he rolls... He's got McKinney. And, and, and that was a good yeah. offensive possession. Whelan misses the three, and Clark with the rebound for the card. Oh, what a move. He split the defenders and feels like a key stretch there. Bellerman had got back with him, two, and Louisville with a quick 4-0 run. Three minutes left to play. Tipped him for three. Got it. Two and a half minutes left to play. Louisville by three. See if they go back to Huntley Hatfield inside. They'll bring the double as Suter goes down again, and then look at the pass from Johnson to James for the easy two. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson with a jumper and got it. What a shot from the freshman. And the lead is back to five. I think Bellerman will let this possession go. And then Scotty Davenport does like to stretch out the game. So swing it. Six on the shot clock. Inside a trainer for the overhead slam. And the Louisville lead is six. Wow, that's a great possession from Louisville. The skip pass from White. The three-pointer from Bellerman off the mark. We're going to get a foul. The drive by White in the corner. And look at the ball movement. 19 points. The lead is six. 30 seconds and counting. Freem all the way to the basket. And I thought White might have got a piece of it, but it still goes in. And Bellerman has cut the lead to four. And they'll use their final timeout. You've got time. I still think right now... Now I think you got to go for a three. Let's McKinney see what they is do. probably going to go to the basket on Johnson. I'm guessing he does, and he gets the easy two with 17.8 left against New Mexico State. And hitting them under some pretty serious game pressure here right now. 
See if McKinney goes again to the basket. No, they're going to go for the three now. And Smith's three from the corner is good. And it's a two-point game with nine seconds left. As they come down the floor and just not sure where Huntley Hatfield was on that one coming out late. Clark playing off the ball. Bellman, after committing, after being caught for only three personal fouls in that first half, and all really in the final minute. 1.8 seconds left to go. A double-double. No. He does not get the double-double, but Louisville will get out of here with a win, and the cards are 4-3 and three, heading into ACC play on Sunday.